Welcome back, everybody, to another another gameplay video on World of Warplanes. Today, today I'm going to be in the Pakalikarpov I-5, which is so it's a Soviet. Let me fix this. It's a so it's a Soviet it's a Soviet Soviet aircraft. It's a, and it has, and is, it has the same pros and cons of the, of the Goldster, Gold, of the Gloucester Gold Flinch, in, on World of Warplanes. It has a, it's a multi-role fighter, tier one, and it requires one pilot. One of the main fighter aircrafts of the Red Army Air Force in the early 1930s, used during World War II on a limited basis. But that's, but that's just this. Let's take, let's take a look at the full, let's take a look at the full details. Ooh, this could take a while. It's a big aircraft too. Compared to the others, this one's got a bigger history. Woohoo! But I'm willing to get I'm willing to do it. Let's just get let's get started. Wiki loves Mo Olakarpov I5. From Polycarpov I5. From Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. I5. An I5 in flight. Role. Fighter. National origin. Soviet Union Manufacturer Polycarpov Designer NN Polycarpov First Flight April 29, 1930 Introduction 1931 Retired 1942 Primary User VVS Naval Aviation Produced 1931-34 Number built. 803. The Polycarpov I-5 was a single-seat biplane which became the primary Soviet fighter between its introduction in 1931 through 1936, after which it became the standard advanced trainer. Following Operation Barbarossa, which destroyed much of the Soviet Air Forces, VVS, surviving I-5S were equipped with four machine guns and bomb racks and pressed into service as light ground attack aircraft and night bombers in 1941. They were retired in early 1942 as Soviet aircraft production began to recover and modern ground attack aircraft like the Ilyushin IL-2 became available. A total of 803 built, including three prototypes. Content. Evil op Development edit. The 1928 five-year plan ordered the Tupolev Design Bureau to develop a mixed construction, metal and wood slash fabric, biplane fighter powered by a Bristol Jupiter 7 engine with the first prototype completed by September 1, 1929. The new fighter was designated I-5, Istribatel fighter, but had the internal Tupolev designation of Ant-12. Concurrently, Nikolai Nikolaevich Polykarpov's group was tasked with creating a wood construction aircraft designated as the Polykarpov I-6 to the same specification. The I-5 design, begun by Pavel Sukhoi, under the supervision of Andrei Tupolev, lagged because the Tupolev Bureau was preoccupied with large bombers. As the result the I-5 and I-6 projects were unified in 1929 under Polykarpov's leadership, although neither project met its specified completion date 1. Nikolai Polykarpov was arrested by the OGPU in September 1929 for the crime of industrial sabotage for these failures and sentenced to death, although this was commuted to 10 years imprisonment in a labor camp. In December 1929 the OGPU gathered a number of aircraft engineers together at Butyrka prison, including Polykarpov, and formed the Internal Prison Design Bureau, Constructorskoy Bureau Vinotreni Yatair KBVT, under the leadership of Dmitry Pavlovich Grigorovich. The KBVT was transferred to quarters on the grounds of Factory, Zavod, NR-30 in Moscow Kadinka in early 1932 shortly afterwards Polykarpov replaced Grigorovich as the head designer when his concept for the I-5 was approved by the OGPU. The full-scale mock-up was approved on March 28, 1930 and the first prototype, designated VT-11, Vinotreni Yatayarma Internal Prison, was completed a month later 3. The first prototype, VT-11. It made its first flight on April 30, 1930 and was fitted with an imported supercharged 450 horsepower, 340 kilowatts, Jupiter 7. It was painted in silver with a red cheat line, a red VT was superimposed on the red star on the rudder. The second prototype, known as the VT-12, 
had a Jupiter 6 engine, and took to the air on May 22, bearing the name, Klim Varasha Love. The two prototypes also differed in minor details regarding the shape of the tail and the construction of the landing gear. All this meant a slight difference in weight and performance between the two prototypes was present, with the second being slightly heavier and faster, while the first had a slight range advantage and a higher service ceiling. The third prototype, designated as the VT-13 and inscribed with, a gift for the XVth Congress of the party, was powered by a 600 horsepower, 450 kilowatts, Soviet-built M-15 engine with a NACA cowling, but this proved to be unreliable and was not put into production one. The second prototype passed its state acceptance trials on August 13, 1931 and was ordered into production a month later on September 13. One problem noted during the trials was a tendency to make an uncontrolled 180 degrees turn when landing in light winds. Shortening the landing gear by 15 cm, 5.9 in, and moving them 12 cm, 4.7 in, cured the problem. The engineer who suggested the change was awarded the Order of the Red Star for his ingenuity. Ten pre-production aircraft had already been ordered and they were assembled between August and October. They all had imported engines fitted, but trialed various small improvements for the production aircraft that included cooling vents for the crankcase, introduction of a pitot tube and static vent in the starboard upper wing, a fared headrest for the pilot, and a metal propeller whose pitch could be adjusted on the ground for. Design Edit the I-5 was a single-seat biplane with the upper wing slightly larger than the lower, and a fixed landing gear with a tail skid. The aircraft was of mixed construction, with the fuselage being made of a framework of welded steel tubes covered by a fabric skin over the rear fuselage, with the front fuselage section being covered by detachable duralumin panels as far back as the rear of the cockpit. There were also detachable panels allowing easy access to the tail skid shock absorber. The fabric skin was laced for tightness and the seams were covered with calico. A fireproof bulkhead separated the 165 liters, 36 imp gal, 44 US gal, fuel tank from the engine and a fire extinguisher was fitted with outlets to the fuel pump, inlet pipe and carburetor. The conventional landing gear was connected by a one-piece axle and some aircraft were fitted with teardrop-shaped spats covering the wheels. Initially the tail skid was fixed but later aircraft had smaller skids that moved in concert with the rudder. Rubber rings were used as shock absorbers on the landing gear 5. The wings were built with two spars. The upper wing was made in three parts, with the middle section being of duralumin and the outer ones being made of wood. The wooden lower wings were built in single sections, using a Gotten Gen 436 profile. The duralumin and type struts that separated the wings, and attached the upper wing to the fuselage, had a teardrop profile and were reinforced with steel bracing wires. Laced lacquered fabric covered the empennage and wings, except for the roots of the lower wings which were covered in plywood and the leading edges of the wings were skinned in duralumin for the first 150 cm, 59 in. Ailerons were fitted only to the upper wing. All movable control surfaces and the tail section were built with doped fabric over metal framing. Bracing wires above and below the tail were fitted on the prototypes, but production aircraft replaced the lower wires with a strut on each side. The horizontal tail was offset 3.5 mm, 0.14 in, to port to compensate for the engine's torque, but it could be adjusted on the ground 5. Some early production aircraft had imported Bristol Jupiter 6 engines with a metal cowling, but the bulk of the production aircraft used the M22 license-built copy, both of 480 horsepower, 358 kilowatts, with a town end ring. Early aircraft usually had a fixed pitch wooden propeller with a diameter of 2.9 meters, 9 feet 6 in, but these were replaced by a 2.7 meters, 8 feet 10 in, duralumin propeller without a spinner that could have its pitch adjusted on the ground 6. Two synchronized 7.62 mm, 0 0.300 in, PV-1 machine guns were fitted in the fuselage with 600 rounds apiece with an OP-1 telescopic sight. It was hoped to fit another pair but the extra weight adversely affected the aircraft's performance during tests. Two Smalder 5 underwing bomb racks were fitted that could carry one 10 kg bomb apiece. Beam-type bomb racks were evaluated on the I-5 that could carry a pair of 250 kg bombs, but these had such adverse effects on its performance that they were rejected for service use. One of the tests with these racks had the aircraft diving down upon the target, 
the first example of dive bombing in the Soviet Union. The I-5 was also used to evaluate the accuracy of the Rs-82 rocket, although they are not known to have been used by the aircraft in Service 7. I-5S called up during the emergency in 1941 were converted for use as fighter bombers by adding two more machine guns, and some aircraft were fitted with the heavy bombs that had been rejected earlier. The ground attack version is sometimes referred to as the I-5LSH-1. Test pilot Mark Gala described the flying qualities of the I-5 thus, after flying it I was convinced that the I-5 is quite a handful, a capricious aircraft. However, if you are careful with the controls and do not offend the machine with rough actions, it will not depart controlled flight. 8. Operational History Edit 54 I-5S were delivered to the VVS by October 1, 1931, and 66 by the end of the year. These were all aircraft from Zavod NR-1 at Kadinka, but Zavod NR-21 in Gorky began deliveries the following year. It delivered 10 in 1932, 321 in 1933 and 330 in 1934. Zavod NR1 delivered 76 in 1932 before beginning production of the Heinkel HD37 as the I7. The I5 was first delivered to units in the Leningrad, Ukraine and Transbaikal military districts and comprised 20% of the VVS's fighter force by the end of 1932. During 1933 deliveries began to units in the Far Eastern, Belarusian, and Moscow military districts and they comprised 40% of the fighter strength by the end of the year. By the end of 1934 most of the Polykarpov I-3S and Topol F-I-4S had been replaced and deliveries had begun to naval aviation. The I-5 began to be replaced by the Polykarpov I-15. In 1936, and was completely phased out from frontline use by the end of 1937, but continued to be employed as an advanced trainer. 9. Following the German invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1940, the heavy losses of frontline aircraft endured by the VVS together with Following the German invasion of the Soviet Union in June 1941, the heavy losses of frontline aircraft endured by the VVS together with the disruption of aircraft production resulted in I-5S being removed from training units and returned to combat service as ground attack aircraft or night bombers until early 1942. Some I-5S were used by the 605th and 606th Fighter Regiments, Istribatelnyi Aviatchenyi Polki, IAP, during the defense of Moscow as night bombers until re-equipping in February 1942-10 the 2nd Ground Attack Regiment. Shturmovoy Aviatchenyi Pok, SHAP, was raised in September 1941 in the Crimea from reservists and the Kachin Flying School. By October 10, 32 I-5S were on hand, although attrition had reduced them to 16 serviceable. They were down to a total of a dozen aircraft by October 18. They served until February 1, 1942 when the regiment was withdrawn for conversion to Ilyush in IL-2S and redesignated as the 766th SHAP-11. The 11th SHAP was raised by the Air Force of the Black Sea Fleet on September 22, 1941. On October 18 it mustered 18 serviceable and 15 unserviceable I-5S, although this was reduced to 11 serviceable and 8 unserviceable aircraft by November 7. It kept the I-5S in service until February 1, 1942 when the regiment was reorganized. 12. Variants Edit the I-5 was involved in tests of the Zvino project where a Tupol FTB-3 heavy bomber carried three I-5S as parasite fighters. One I-5 was carried was on each wing and a third over the fuselage. Ramps were used to get the wing-mounted aircraft to their places, but the fuselage-mounted aircraft had to be lifted by hand. This was so cumbersome that they were generally used solely as an extra power plant for the TB-3 later in the program 10 the aircraft used in these trials used the longer landing gear with smaller tires originally used in the prototypes 6. A two-seat conversion trainer, designated the I-5 UTI, Uchebno Trenirovachnya Stribatel fighter trainer, was built by one of the factories. Only about 20 are believed to have been built. The cockpit was moved back and a second one inserted in front of it 10. Operators edit. Soviet Union. VVS. Naval Aviation. Specifications edit. Data from Gordon and Dexter, Polykarpov's biplane fighters, P-22. General characteristics. Crew, 1. Length, 6.78 m, 22 feet 3 in. Upper wingspan, 10.24 m, 33 feet 7 in. 
Lower wingspan, 7.4 m, 24 feet 3 in. Wing area, 21.3 square meters 229 square feet. Airfoil, Gotten Gen 436. Empty weight, 934 kilograms 2,059 pounds. Gross weight, 1,355 kilograms 2,987 pounds. Fuel capacity, 165. Power plant, 1 times Schwitzow M22 9-cylinder, single row radial engine, 358 kilowatts, 480 HP. Propellers, 2 blade duralumin, 2.7 M, 8 feet 10 in, diameter. Performance. Maximum speed, 278 km per hour, 173 miles per hour, 150 knots, at sea level. Range, 660 km, 410 miles, 360 nmi. Service ceiling, 7,500 m 24,600 feet. Time to altitude, 1.6 minutes to 1,000 m 3,300 feet. Horizontal turn time, 10 SEC. Armament. Guns, 2 times 7.62 mm PV-1 machine guns. Bombs, 2 times 22 pounds 10 kilograms. See also edit. Wikimedia Commons has media related to Polycarp Off I-5. Related development. Polycarp Off I-15. Aircraft of comparable role, configuration, and era. Bristol Bulldog. Fairy Flycatcher. Gloucester Gamecock. Boeing F-3B. Curtis Falcon. Related lists. List of interwar military aircraft. References edit. Notes edit. Carrot ABC Chevrove. Carrot Gordon and Dexter, P4. Carrot Gordon and Dexter, P13. Carrot Gordon and Dexter, pages 13, 16, 20. Carrot AB Gordon and Dexter, pages 20 to 21. Carrot AB Gordon and Dexter, P21. Carrot Gordon and Dexter, pages 22, 24 to 25. Carrot Gordon and Dexter, P24. Carrot Gordon and Dexter, pages 23 to 25. Carrot ABC Gordon and Dexter, P25. Carrot 2766, in Russian. October 3rd, 2009 Retrieved December 16th, 2009. Check date values in, date equals, help. Carrot 1111, in Russian. September 1st, 2008 Retrieved December 16th, 2009. Check date values in, date equals, help. Bibliography edit. Gordon, Yefim, and Dexter, Keith. Polikarpov's Biplane Fighters, Red Star, Volume 6. Earl Shilton, Leicester, UK, Midland Publishing, 2002. ISBN 1-85780-141-5. Gordon, Yefim. Soviet Air Power in World War II. Hinckley, England. Midland Publishing, 2008 ISBN 978-1-85780-304-4. Chevrov VB, 1985. Historia Konstruktsky Samolitov VSSSR du 1938G, 3 ISD. In Russian. Mashinostro and E. ISBN 5-217-03112-3. Further reading edit. Abanshin, Michael E., and Gut, Nina. Fighting Polycarpov, Eagles of the East No. 2. Linwood, Washington, Aviation International, 1994. ISBN 1-884909-01-9. Ada, Paul, and Moeng, Sof, General Editors, The Encyclopedia of World Aircraft ISBN 1-85605-705-4. Gordon, Yefim, and Hazanov, Dmitry. Soviet Combat Aircraft of the Second World War. Volume 1, Single Engine Fighters. Earl Shilton, Leicester, UK, Midland Publishing Limited, 1998. ISBN 1-85780-083-4. Green, William, and Swanborough, Gordon. The Complete Book of Fighters. New York, Smith Mark Publishers, 1994. ISBN 0-83173939-8. Gunston, Bill. 
The Osprey Encyclopedia of Russian Aircraft 1875-1995. London, Osprey, 1995 ISBN 1-85532-405-9. Leonard, Herbert. Les avions de chasse Polycarpov. Rennes, France, Editions West France, 1981. ISBN 2-85882-322-7, French. Stapfer, Hans Heiri. Polycarpov Fighters in Action, Part 1, Aircraft in Action No. 157. Carrollton, TX, Squadron Slash Signal Publications Incorporated, 1995. ISBN 0-89747-343-4. Show. I want to thank you for sticking around. If you, I know that was a lot to take in, but if you, and I, and I thank you even more for sticking around, for sticking, around, still watching, or, or just for sticking around, sticking around and listening to that whole thing, or you just skipped ahead, just to, you know, get to the battle. So, and speaking of battle, let's get right to it. Attention! You are entering the combat zone! Get ready for battle! Good luck! This place again. This time you gotta try. This time you gotta try and succeed. Tell me what you can do, pilots. Let's roll. Here's a defense aircraft. Here comes an enemy. Got one. Darn, I missed. Oh, dang. be different. Yeah, we got two bases. I think they might need more might help more here. Now then. You know it'll be so much easier with a mic.
This way you can chat to your teammates and fight at the same time. Grade 5 multi- How did that happen? We just had two, and how did that happen? Bad. I seems like I, whatever I said, I just jinxed it. Holy crap, man. We just ran, in, ran into each other. But I'm gonna finish the job. Ah. Man, I need health pretty bad. Whoa! Yes, we got it! I was born to fly, baby. Born to fly. Yeah. Now for the... Okay, now we're going for this one. They're head for Got him. They're all heading this way! Now they're in a real dogfight now. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms is approaching. We'll soon be unable to provide support. Do you copy? Over. Stay alert, pilots. Large enemy force spotted over the airfield. I know. So many. Lost again. I got the Par Force KC Metal Class 4. Award for destroying 15 air defense aircraft. Lost again. Man, I only won once with the Goldfinch. What's up with that?
Let's see what this new medal is. Poriskin's Metal Class 4. Awarded for destroying at least 15 air defense aircraft. Historical note. Alexander Pl Pakasir was a Soviet fighter ace in 1941. 41 to 45. He flew 650 combat missions in the in the MiG-3, Yak-1, and, and P-39 Air Cobra. He shot down 59 enemy aircraft personally and six together with other pilots. That's amazing. I only got a grade. Only got a grade four multi-role fighter. Wow. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Let's see his battle results. Amazing. Look at that. This guy's good. I think he was like the he's the me on the Man. He's good. Sector defense. To win, it is not enough to just ca just capture the sectors. You also have to keep them under your control. Inter intercept to destroy enemy aircraft that want to capture your sectors. Mission. Destroy three enemy aircraft when defending the sectors. Navigate the battlefield with the help of the minimap in the bottom right corner of the screen. To or open... Or open... Or open a full map by holding tab. Neutral sectors are marked gray. Allied sectors in blue. Enemy sectors in red. Sectors under. Sectors under under the team's control being bring resources. The main the main way to win is to accumulate the necessary amount of resources. Tip: Watch the video game of conquest. Pilot, get ready for action. Let's go. I've already seen this, but I'm gonna let you. We have complete control of the skies. Way to go. I'm proud of you, pilot. Head back home. The airfield is ours. Utilize its advantage. on the enemy. This will make things easier for you.
could have spoke that one, but since we already watched it before, we don't. I didn't need to. Now, and I know you took a lot just to, just to do that thing, and I just. Now the next aircraft I'll be flying is the P. Is the P-12, an American fi fighter? But that's but that's for another game. But that's for another um another video. Anyway. Thanks for watching this video. Now don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video slash playlist. If you do one of them or manage to do them all, which includes watching this video slash playlist again, I would really appreciate it. But until then, let's get airborne, aim high, fly, fight, win in the skies on World of Warplanes. See you there.